So hello and welcome. I'm Frederick Dunn and today I've got a growing problem. That's right. This is a yellow jacket wasp nest and it's doubled in size in just the past week. So if you want to see what it looked like before, please look at the video that's linked down in the description below. Today is September the 27th and a lot of people are finding out that wasps have made large paper nests in unlikely places, places where you can't have them. And that's the case here. They've attached themselves to the side of a bedroom window, which is right adjacent to the deck where everyone walks. So something has to be done with these wasps. We have to get rid of them. Now, what would happen if we just left it in place? Nothing. Well, they would continue to do their part. They would gather pests and insects. And yes, they even attack my honeybees especially early in the morning when it's too cold for the honeybees to fly. So these guys aren't really that welcome where they are. And what happens this time of year also as the leaves turn and uh, paper wasp nests get revealed, people get too close to them when they're raking leaves or they're mowing their yards. And now that the nest has grown so large, they can send out hundreds, if not thousands, to defend the nest. What are they doing right now? They're making paper wasp nests. So they're constantly reconstructing this nest and constantly expanding it. So I'm gonna show you something in this one. We're gonna go up inside the nest and look around. That's right, we're gonna go in with an endoscope. I should also caution you if you're wearing headphones, you're gonna feel like wasps are flying all around your head because I'm gonna get you really close to this. And we're gonna see if they have eggs, larvae, pupa we're gonna see what's going on in here because as they get to the end of the year they'll be producing queens and they'll produce queens and then those queens will emerge and mate with males that are also from the exact same nest and then at the end of the year they just freeze out and the nest dissolves as the winter weather settles in so they would take care of themselves if they're out somewhere else it wouldn't matter but right here against the house by bedroom window where everyone goes we can't have them so I'm going to take you step by step through the removal but before we do it we're going to look inside and uh, you can see here this one is masticating the cellulose that it's gathered from a dead tree or unfinished wood and they continually make this paper but it's amazing to me this paper isn't very tough if you'll notice here now we've switched to the endoscope camera and we're going to go inside. We're going to see what's up. I want to find their brood chambers. I want to see if they have eggs and larvae and maybe even capped pupa. We'll find out. Now there's no microphone on the end of this camera. I wish there were, but I suppose it would just be really rough to hear because it's going to cut its way through the paper wasp nest. And uh, we're also going to see what the response to it is. I'm just going to stand here very calm. You should be warned that uh, I don't recommend doing this. I'm wearing full protective clothing. So because, as you might imagine, they're not going to be very happy to have a camera with a light on the end of it going up inside. And here we are up against the vinyl siding. And it was interesting to me, as we follow this in, that they've built a second layer. In other words, they didn't just attach themselves to the vinyl siding and then make that part of their nest. They just used it as a structure to attach to and then they created another wall in there. That was interesting. And even with the camera going in, they just keep working. It's very interesting. I think you can get away with quite a lot if you just move slow and you don't panic. And uh, you do minimal damage. The probe slant lens that I'm using here is about two hundred thousandths of an inch in diameter, so it's not even a quarter inch. And this allows me to poke it right through the paper. So you can see all the layers they've made and the different colors as they source their building materials from different trees and different types of wood, probably. And it doesn't hold up to weather for very long, so they're in a constant state of maintenance and repair. So we're getting in here. Most of the wasps we're looking at here are females, and they're all capable of stinging. And then I also found that uh, as I push the probe in, if I back it out a little bit, that's when I can see. So it seems to have 
some challenges. It's auto-focusing. There we go. Now I'm trying to find the hexagonal cells. Even honeybees have hexagonal cells. It should be no surprise that wasps and hornets also do. So we're getting up in here. They're kind of aware now something's going on. I mean, why would there be a light inside their paper nest? I'm going to back out. I'm going to try another opening around here. And keep in mind that I'm damaging this nest, but uh, if I decided to leave them, um, which I'm not going to, but if I did, they would just go through and quickly repair all the damage that this camera lens is doing, and uh, they would do it remarkably fast. Look at this one. Not, not happy to see something unfamiliar in there. And then there's a vinyl siding. We're already up against the side of the house, so... Did not find the nursery yet. Now the audio on this camera is uh, actually on the unit itself, so the probe doesn't have the pickup. So you do hear some, but that's just holding the camera and manipulating the probe. If you want to know more about the endoscope that I'm using, you can look down in the video description. I'll link it there. So we'll back out and find another entry point here. Now normally they would be hunting protein. So they eat insects and caterpillars. They take care of a lot of garden pests. They even get protein from roadkill, if you can believe that. So any animal protein they would bring back when they're feeding their own larvae. Because when they're in the larval state, their larvae eat meat and they need to bring that back for them. These adult wasps cannot eat meat themselves. So when you see them with a little ball of protein in their mouth there, with their mandibles that are capable of carving up meat, uh, they're flying that back to feed brood. So I wanted to see the brood status. Now here we are, this is the nursery. See the hexagonal cells there? And of course, as expected, there's lots of uh, wasps there ready to attend to developing larvae or pupa. Once the pupa happens, that's when they're capped over. They don't have to feed them anymore. None of these cells are capped. So it looks like they're already in decline on their own. Maybe you could ignore them, but uh, you'll find out as their numbers increase and as the size of the nest increases, so does their defensive attitude. So I'm going to go around to try to find an approach here straight up through the underside now that I know where the brood nest is. I'm going to try to get a look to see. There we are. You can see the bottom of the cells now. I see no eggs. Oh, there's an egg lower left right there. Sorry, I moved along too quick. So they do have some eggs. Good news is they're not hatched yet. Because once they hatch, that's when they have to feed them. And that's when they're after insect protein, which is not all bad. You know, if you're a beekeeper, you're thinking, well, they're after my bees and they're going to get my brood and they're going to feed that to their brood. But actually, the greatest damage they do to beehives this time of year, first of all, killing bees when they find them on the landing board, but they're trying to get in just to get to their nectar, and uh, they're getting to the honey stores because they need that energy. Look at that one, mashing its mandibles together, trying to threaten the camera. It's kind of interesting. We'll find a few more holes here. We can get in there and get a closer look. Now their brood is in different levels, so there'll be one directly on top of the other, so when you get to one, you have to push through that. Oh, there's eggs right there. Darn it. The problem is, you see it on the screen, but uh, it's hard to see exactly what you're looking at, so I need to tell myself to slow down a little bit. Now while I'm doing this, some of the wasps, of course, are coming after the person holding this camera, which would be me. But I'm kind of surprised at how low-key the response is from inside the brood nest here. So do I recommend getting rid of yellow jackets everywhere? I do not. But I do recommend dealing with them if they're right where people are going to be, where it's unavoidable. Now you can see I've damaged that one when I put the probe through. And I do see an egg lower left there. 
So anyway, it really doesn't matter that much because I'm going to remove this entire nest. I'm not going to let them continue, but I thought it would be interesting to get inside and see what's going on in general and how things look from kind of a wasp eye view. Just like honeybees, they have uh, five eyes. So they've got their large compound eyes, they've got their simple eyes, the acella. And now one of them put venom on my camera. That wasn't fair. So that limits my ability to see and I didn't bring a alcohol wipe with me, which I normally would use to clean that lens. So, well that's that. We're going to put that away and we're going to go back to the normal camera. So here we are. You can see the damage that I've done with the probe. And uh, again, left to themselves, they would just repair this right away. The camera is being attacked. So once again, fair warning. Those of you with headphones on, when I start to cut into this nest, um, you're going to get an audio boost here with the wasps coming at the camera. They do sting the camera. A few of these wasps actually got their stingers stuck in the eye cup of the camera and could not get themselves free right away because it has a rubber bumper around it and their stingers got stuck in that. That's kind of interesting. Good news. I don't have to look through the eyepiece. I'm looking through the fold-out uh, screen, of course. But uh, they're after the camera. They're not really even paying that much attention to me. So we are going to cut into this nest and I'm going to remove it. I'm going to cut into it kind of like a piece of cake, if you can imagine that. I'm going to see what their response is, predictably, of course. They're not going to be happy, so let's just cut it apart here. Now, I went into the kitchen and uh, my wife's not home, so I collected one of her carving knives. I'm sure she won't care. Just going to follow the vinyl siding there and see if we can cut it free. And being paper or cellulose, it actually cuts very easily. It would not be hard to just slice this away from the face of the building and drop the whole thing into a bucket of soapy water or put it in an industrial bag. But uh, I'm going to cut it apart bit by bit because I also want to use this opportunity to see what's going on and to share with you what goes on in here. So if you want to see how it started out, again, the video links are down in the description. You can see the beginnings of this nest, which is probably when I should have removed it. sharpen the knife ahead of time. This is why they're always building under an overhang, a shed roof, maybe the entrance to somebody's um, barn or somebody's attic if there's a hole up there because it's made out of paper. If it was just rained on constantly, it would fall apart in the rain and they would have to be constantly rebuilding. That's why they, why they put it under the soffit, which is what they did here. Get in here, I'm going to find those. Uh, there it is. You can see the hexagonal cells there. So we're getting right into the nursery. So it is really interesting how much of this nest is really just layers and layers of insulation, protection from the weather, ventilation channels. Of course, it's occupied normally by a lot of wasps. This was being done in the middle of the day, so we have to guess 50% or more of the residents of this wasp nest are out foraging for resources. So they'll be coming back later. If you did this at night, you would have them all. So if you were going to cut it out, drop it into a bucket of soapy water or something late at night, uh, you'd probably get more of the residents, but removing the nest is going to be enough in this case. Here's more of those brood cells. Here again, they're attacking the microphone, which has a dead cat windsock on it, so they're, of course, burying themselves in that. They put so much venom on the eyepiece, you couldn't even look through it now if I wanted to. And that's 
pretty much it. I mean, we pulled out the whole nursery. There's one little piece just off center there that we can get out. And I'm sure that even after this is removed, a lot of those that are out and about will return and start to rebuild the nest again. But hopefully they won't be laying new eggs, they won't be able to build their numbers again, they're going to run out of time next week, they're already going to be into October, the nights are going to get colder, and with a tiny new nest their chances will be slim to none of generating very many replacements. And I'm not sure what the foragers will do when they come back if there's no nest, if they just go off on their own, if they start to rebuild the nest and camp, and they'll just finish out their lives, I guess. They can drink nectar that they find uh, on flowers, which we still have this time of year. And without a nest, though, without a home base, they're not inspired to go in and rob out beehives and things like that. And the beehives are only about 100 feet, 120 feet from where we are right here. So it's reasonable to think that uh, these wasps here are among those that raid honey beehives. Now, if these were regular paper wasps, um, I have relocated those nests before, but yellow jackets aren't friendly enough to do that with. I'm not that interested in relocating and reestablishing them somewhere else. Plus, we're at the end of the year here. I kind of want to check in these corners and make sure that they haven't found their way into the sheathing somehow inside the house. And dig all this stuff out. And then in a minute here, we're going to follow it up with uh, dish soap. Dawn Ultra Free and Clear Dish Soap. So I'm going to spray down all these little crevices with that in case there are wasps hiding in behind the, in behind the siding and things like that. We're just going to spritz them down. And uh, Dawn Ultra Free and Clear, two tablespoons per gallon of water. Uh, will really knock down wasps and kills them. And the good news is the free and clear variety is biodegradable. So it's not going to be a hazard to the environment. And it's not an insecticide per se, although it's going to act as one. It breaks down their cuticle, which is their waxy coating on their bodies. And once it does that, it uh, Increases wetting ability, which is for the moisture to go right into their spiracles, which are on their thorax and their abdomen. You can see their abdomens expanding and contracting really fast there. That's how they breathe. That's also their circulatory system. So when you spray them with something that has dish soap in it, uh, the surface tension has gone, and so the liquid goes right into their spiracles, and they'll suffocate. So it happens pretty fast, actually. And it doesn't matter what insect you sprayed, it would have the same effect. So it breaks down the protective coating, soaks right in, and the wasps don't make it. So we're going to give them some spritzes here. It's just water and Dawn Ultra dish soap. And even those that fly away, once you hit them with the dish soap, they fly away, land on a tree or something, and then later they fall off the tree and die on the ground, and the skunks come through at night, and they eat them. We have several skunks that are constantly on patrol here. In fact, if you had just put the wasp nest on the ground somewhere, there's a very good chance a skunk would come through 
and eat that. They dig out yellow jacket wasps that are in the ground. And of course, they don't have access to those that are in trees and up on houses like this. So it's up to us to deal with those. You can see that I do have gloves on. No need to get stung, although they focus their attention not on my hands, but on the camera itself. So I hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching.